There was a time when I had a precious Aiken mini colony being attacked by a coral that I was told was a great beginner or starter SPS coral. I never thought in a million years an easy starter coral would become one of my worst enemies. We're going to talk about today what this coral is that's behind these mean little faces and three other corals that I will never buy again. Now never say never, right? How about this? If this video can get 500 likes, <laughs> I will add one of these four corals to my new Red Sea Reefer G2 build that I swore I would never keep again. And then you guys can watch me document its uncontrollable takeover in my new tank. Or maybe I won't even have to worry about it at all. Let's see. Now first up on my list are nuclear green palithoas. And I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm not great with all these names. Now I would argue that any pally, if, if it's not super colorful, I would just simply avoid it, and that's just me. And here I have a small frag of a few <laughs> nuclear green palithoas. They stayed on the frag rack for a little bit. Well, actually, they stayed on the frag rack for a while. <laughs> a few polyps actually made it onto the rack itself within just a month or so of adding it to the tank. And with just a, I, I think it was just maybe two or three months later, the whole frag rack was just absolutely overrun. Now, nuclear green palithoas, they don't have a strong sting or anything to my knowledge, but they will just encroach and simply smother a coral and take over your tank. And in this case, this frag rack became useless, right? And I didn't even bother trying to recover the frag rack. As you know, I've read about palitoxins and all this stuff online, and it's kind of got me on edge. I just didn't want to even deal with it. Maybe it would have been fine to scrape these off. I don't know. But the, the rack, the frag rack was done. Um, so in short, I would avoid nuclear green palithoas. They are definitely somewhat aggravating with how fast they grow, and they almost feel like they are nuclear, right? They're a nuclear threat to a reef tank, in my opinion. So watch out for those corals. Next up is Pocillopora. This has got to be one of the worst corals <laughs> someone can put in their tank. I was told, hey, you know, this is a great starter SPS coral. So yes, it, it made its way onto my frag rack and sometime later onto the rock work itself. And it was a fairly fast grower. But to be honest, you know, I didn't love the, the kind of the cauliflower type look. And the coloration wasn't really too great. You know, it's nothing too wonderful, to be honest. But that's just the beginning. No one told me that this coral would reproduce asexually throughout your tank and literally lay these little baby frags throughout your whole tank, spreading faster than an aptasia problem. I mean, it was, it, was, it was just absolutely crazy. I had to frequently take a toothbrush to these little baby corals or scrape them off the rock. It just became, it was, it was insane, you know. It was a real problem. It just added to my maintenance routine. So if, if at all possible, I would avoid Pacillopora. Uh, especially the green variant. Now, I've been told the pink variant isn't as bad, but proceed cautiously if you want to experiment. Third on my list are uh, spongodes or spungodes. I've heard it pronounced both ways, so I don't know. I'm going to say spungodes from here on out. Um, it's a type of Monipora. Now, this may be a shocker to some of you. Spungodes actually have decent coloration, and they can have some pretty cool growth patterns. The problem is, once again, they grow just way too fast, and they will crowd out other corals and inhibit their growth. And when you frag them, no one wants to buy them. No one even wants, I can't even get rid of them. It's hard to find people to give frag to for free. So here's a frag of spun goads that I grew very quickly. I think this was just about three to five months, maybe six months of growth. And in fact, it grew so quickly, and it's hard to tell from these, some of these pictures, I, I don't have great shots, but my strawberry shortcake became surrounded by this coral. And you can even see in, the, in one shot here, this coral is growing literally against the front glass of my tank. And it was just nuts to keep this thing in check. It was always a problem. I constantly had to prune it to keep it from touching other corals. 
And to be honest, it was it was not much more to me than a weed. It made it difficult to grow out my other more prized SPS colony. So proceed cautiously if you ever pick up a frag of Spungos or Spongeos Manipura. They, they grow insanely fast and can overtake your tank. Fourth, and the last coral that makes my list of corals I will never buy again is the ever famous GSP or Green Star Polyps. I think almost, you know, I swear, almost every new reefer I think is probably told, hey, you know, go buy some GSP. And here's a little frag I picked up long, long ago. Actually, this is the first coral I ever owned. And uh, I think it's back in 2010, it looks like. And you can see in just a few short weeks, it had overgrown the frag plug and made its way into the rock. So, I, you know, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling like, oh, I know what I'm doing in this hobby. This is great. Uh, but this coral, <laughs> it grows super fast and it's an encruster, right? So now to be fair, I think a lot of people, there's some people out there that really like the bright green coloration and the kind of the carpet of polyps that flow through the water column, if you will. But this coral, it just be, quickly became a problem. And as you can see, it creeped up my rock work, started taking over precious real estate all too fast. And I found it so tedious to keep it in check that I actually, what you know, what I did, uh, I pulled this rock out of the tank and took a hammer and chisel to it and just completely broke off and removed the section where the GSP was encrusting and growing. So in my opinion, you know, I wouldn't touch this stuff again. It's just too too hard to isolate it and keep it in check. So let's recap. Why did these four corals make my list of corals I would never buy again? You know, they all look innocent, to be honest. They're, they're just innocent looking frags at first, but they can really take over your tank very, very quickly. Now, a lot of you may disagree with me. I know some of you may really love these types of corals. And that's a great thing I hope, you know, about YouTube, right? Is I'm, I'm expressing a lot of this as my opinion. And I'm trying to help out some of you that, that may want to not go down this path. Now, if you have other suggestions of corals that make your own little personal list of corals to avoid, list those out in the comment section. So thanks again, guys and gals, for tuning in. Happy reefing. And watch out for those Pasilopora hitchhikers. They will take over. Take care. Peace.